After 9 months of waiting, I'm super happy to announce that we just released the stable release of the INAV7 Ferocious Falcon. And there is a lot of features that I think you will love. VTOL and FPV drones for sure. We have something special for you. But I think everyone should find something for himself in INAV7. This video is the short walkthrough of the most important features. Not all, because there is just too many. If you want to know the exact list of changes, please read the release notes. Let's begin with not so happy news. With INAV7, just like with every other release in the past, we are getting rid of some of the features. First of all, the F411 flight controllers should be treated now on as end of life. INAV7 is the last INAV release that officially supports the F411 flight controllers. They are still here, they still have majority of the functions, but we will not release the next version, INAV8, for F411s. They just do not have enough flesh, memory and processing power to put everything that we want into them. Just like some time ago we got rid of F3s, now it's time for F411s. INAV7 no longer supports the NMEA GPS protocol. If you are still using the MEA, please change to Ublox. All the modern and even not so modern GPS modules should support the Ublox protocol. It's better, it's faster, it's bidirectional, it allows auto configuration of the GPS, honestly, there is not a single good reason to keep using NMEA GPS protocol in 2023 or 2024. Just switch to Ublox. INAV7 also does not support the FreeSky D-Series telemetry. The legacy, and I do mean legacy telemetry protocol that was available on the FreeSky D-Series receiver. Not even the X4R and smart port telemetry, the even older stuff. It's obsolete for years, deprecated for years, and INAV7 just does not support it any longer. But to be honest, I even doubt you will notice, because last time we checked, almost nobody was using the D-Series telemetry at all. Luckily, that's the end of the not-so-happy news. Now, very important remark. With INAV7, output for the motors and servo mappings might have changed. We have a completely new output mapping mechanism and in case of some, well, let's say not so popular flight controllers, the order of the outputs might have changed. This is why before the first flight, go to the mixer tab in the INAV configurator and verify that the assigned motors and servos are correctly wired to the flight controller. And of course, test on the workbench without propellers on the motors. You do not want to have your fingers cut. Luckily, only a handful of not so popular flight controllers will be affected. And my prediction is that 99% of you will not even notice any change. And now it's finally time for the good news and new features. First of all, new targets. INAV7 now works on the new flight controllers. To get the exact list of the freshly supported supported hardware, go to the release notes, because this list is likely to be updated soon. So just follow the link and you will know the new hardware supported by INAV. One of the biggest user-friendly improvements inside of the INAV is the flexible motor and servo assignment mechanism. Right now, inside of the INAV configurator, you have the option to assign functions to each of the output groups. This means you can basically basically change the behavior of each of the outputs. Motors, servos, almost however you want. But you still have to remember that outputs are assigned into groups and you can change the function of the whole group, not a single output inside of the group. Many people were waiting for that. INAV7 supports VTOLs, the vertical takeoff or landing aircrafts. This is done thanks to mixer profile and general VTOL support. To have this thing running, you basically have to prepare two different mixer rules, one for the vertical phase of the flight, when your VTOL acts as a multi 
multi-rotor and one for the horizontal when it acts like an aeroplane. And of course, switch between two profiles in flight. This video is not a tutorial on how to set up VTOL in iNav. There are official iNav documents that describe the process and what you have to do. So just go there, the links are in the description and read by yourself on how to set up VTOL in iNav. Also, in the iNav Discord server, there is the VTOL dedicated chat where you can ask for support. And by the way, how do you like my iNav hat? It has both iNav logo and the most awesome iNav slogan ever created. If you would like to get one for yourself, just follow the link in the description. Another cool feature that simplifies the iNav setup is the Easy Tune. I have a separate video on the topic, so we will not go into the details, but the Easy Tune is the equivalent of the Betaflight simplified slider tuning. But move to one step forward because with the easy tune you can not only set up your PID controllers but also filters, rates and expo. Everything is driven with eight sliders with nice user interface that describes precisely of what each function is doing. So follow the link to the detailed video if you want to know more. This shot now works with the SpeedyB F405 V3 as well as Matic F405 TE. Previously with iNav this shot was not supported by those two boards. Now it's fixed and the D-Shot is working perfectly. And by the way, we also fixed some of the other problems that the SpeedyB F405 V3 flight controller had. Now, this board works perfectly with iNav, no problems whatsoever. Another feature that I already have a dedicated video about is the multi-rotor cruise mode. The link to the detailed video is also in the description, but the purpose of the multi-rotor cruise mode is that, well, you can release the sticks of your radio. And the iNav craft will keep constant altitude, constant heading and constant horizontal velocity. You basically only have to set the altitude with the throttle stick, set the heading with the yaw or roll stick and finally set the horizontal velocity with pitch stick. I'm pretty sure the long range pilots will be quite happy. INAF7 greatly improved the GPS performance. INAF7 greatly improved the GPS performance, not only by allowing higher refresh rates and now they are are even configurable, but also by enabling more constellations. GPS and Galileo are not the only ones you can use. It will also work with GLONASS and Beidou. And finally, the MSP VTX support, which is especially important for all the HD0 pilots. All the functions of the MSP VTX are fully supported and you are capable of changing power channel and band using only the standard MSP connection between the iNav flight controller and the HD0 transmitter. No smart audio wire required at all. And finally, don't dozens and dozens of other smaller changes. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the full list is available in the release notes. So if you want to know more, follow the link to the iNav7 release notes. This is the next video you should watch. In the meantime, this was the FPV University. I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!